We've all heard of Bigfoot. The Loch Ness Monster. And maybe even the Chupacabra. These mythical creatures are known as cryptids, and the study of them is known as cryptozoology. Examples of cryptids come from all over the world, and they can vary as much as one's imagination. But now there is a new cryptid, and it's in our own backyard. It's called the Oklahoma octopus. It is said to be an enormous creature, the size of a horse, with reddish-brown skin. It is said to be responsible for a large amount of drownings in Oklahoma lakes, especially Lake Thunderbird and Lake Tenkiller, which have had problems with intruders before. Get in there, Tracy. It was even the subject of an episode of the Animal Planet's docudrama, The Lost Tapes. I won't. Come on. Guys, guys. Do you see that? The legend of the Oklahoma octopus is said to originate from a 200-year-old Native American legend about a huge lake-dwelling leech-like creature that had an appetite for human flesh. But what does science have to say? Can a normally ocean-dwelling animal adapt to fresh water? The answer is yes. Freshwater stingrays, dolphins, and even the bull shark have adapted to live either all or part of their lives in freshwater. Bull sharks have even been found 2,000 miles upstream from the ocean and were the original inspiration for the movie Jaws. And most recently, a species of small freshwater jellyfish has been discovered in Asia. They are also becoming invasive species in North America. But what do experts say about the possibility of a freshwater octopus living in Oklahoma? Well, one thing is that, that all known octopuses are marine. Mm -hmm. Another is that they're, they're benthic, or they live on the bottom. And they feed on the bottom. It would be very unusual to have an octopus swimming to the surface and grab anything. But could an octopus be transplanted into a freshwater lake and survive? Very unlikely. Um, if it could, there would probably be instances of octopuses somewhere else. That um, they usually have some sort of pre-adaptation that allows them to do that. So you see something like in the mussels and the snails. There's a lot of them that live in fresh water, and it can move back and forth. Even you don't see any of that in either the octopuses or the squid or the nautilus or any of the other relatives. None, none of the cephalopods. Could an octopus adapt to freshwater? I doubt it. There's a lot of differences. The most obvious difference is the salt concentration. So when you take something that's lived in marine habitat and you put it in the salt, or in freshwater, where there's not many salt, the water will move into the animal to dilute it, be more equal to the, to the salt concentration in freshwater. So an animal has to be able to excrete a lot of water and save salt, selectively pick out salts from the environment and recycle salts in the body. Okay? And also, usually also be able to avoid intakes of water by being covered with an exoskeleton or something like that. And they don't have anything like that. Bivalves and snails, for instance, have shells on the outside of octopus don't. How long do octopuses live? Could it be the same octopus living in the lake for hundreds of years? Octopus are, are short-lived, um, at most maybe five years. A giant octopus, some octopus just live like six, six or eight months. Um, they lay eggs, the females will take care of those eggs, and they die about the time the eggs hatch. So they don't really have care of the young other than taking care of the eggs. What would happen to octopus eggs laid in fresh water? So they would make them swell. You know, unless they're somehow encased enough. If the eggs were to hatch, would the juveniles have anything to eat? The little juveniles become planktonic and feed on little baby starfish and baby crustaceans and things that are also floating around in the plankton. If they could do that, there's very few freshwater invertebrates that have planktonic larvae. They just don't have that 
system in fresh water. If they could somehow be planktonic in fresh water, they probably wouldn't have enough food. There's some zooplankton, but they're not dense enough or large enough really to properly feed them. What other problems do you see with the Oklahoma octopus story? So Oklahoma isn't on the coast. So in order for an octopus to get up here, he would have had to move up the Mississippi and maybe up the Arkansas River, one of the large rivers. And over time in doing that, you would leave populations all along. I mean, you wouldn't, it's not like you could fly in. And another thing we mentioned is temperature. The, the temperature of um, fresh waters fluctuates quite a bit, whereas the temperature of the oceans is more stable. And although there are some invertebrates that are closely related to marine, they're mostly marine, things like freshwater sponge that occurs here, and freshwater rhizomes, um, they don't survive over the winter as, as adults. They disappear and these spores are some kind of resting stage to overwinter and then they, they come out of the resting stage and grow back up to large individuals. So where did this story come from? It appears to have originated in the nearby state of Arkansas, where this man claimed to have captured a live octopus in a lake. The most likely explanation of this event is that someone released their aquarium octopus into the lake when they could no longer keep it. The story quickly became viral, and multiple news outlets covered the story including the Associated Press. Here's one aquarium octopus eating a shark. This practice of releasing pets when they become too large or too difficult to take care of has resulted in other invasive species in America, including pythons and giant monitor lizards in Florida. The problem in Florida has become so severe that they even schedule regular meetings to deal with the invasive species populations. Florida's problems stem from a long history of being a hub for international exotic pet sales. What's happening in Florida gives plausibility to the Oklahoma octopus story. It therefore may be possible that someone released enough octopuses into the lakes to become a breeding population has been initiated is to look out for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of Florida. And uh, we'll continue to do whatever we need to do to protect them. Lawmakers have talked about passing laws to stop people from owning large snakes that aren't native to Florida. Well, what about the evidence? Does it show that Oklahoma octopus is likely to exist? The lakes in which the Oklahoma octopus is supposed to inhabit aren't near old enough to match the supposed 200-year-old Native American legends. In fact, Oklahoma is completely devoid of natural lakes. Every single Oklahoma lake is man-made. There's also the problem of sightings. This map shows just one website's list of multiple Bigfoot sightings in one year. And while thousands of people report to see Bigfoot every year, there hasn't been a single verified sighting of the Oklahoma octopus. However, there have been lots of sightings of a very familiar cryptid creature. Some people in the Crichton area of Mobile say a leprechaun has taken up residence in their neighborhood. A leprechaun. NBC 15's <laughs> Brian Johnson has more. Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community, many of you bringing binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah! yeah? Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow from... The other limb. Could be a crackhead that got holes to the wrong stuff. It now seems that while it is possible there might be an undiscovered species of gigantic freshwater octopus stalking the lakes of Oklahoma, it is most likely just a myth, a legend, a piece of folklore either based on a man catching a released pet octopus or created as a story on the internet. 
It is also possible that the show The Lost Tapes may have made the entire thing up for entertainment value. <laughs> What's your expert opinion on the Oklahoma octopus? I've seen the video, it's not very convincing. Um, I've asked everybody I know that, that works on, they don't work on octopuses here, of course, they work on mussels and snails and other, other mollusks. They've never even heard of it. You know, and I, I called the nature center at the Quite Thunderbird, where a friend of mine is the naturalist, and she's been there six years, and she had never heard of it of the Oklahoma octopus, and this is yet, this is where it's supposed to occur, this is where it's supposed to occur to people. Are octopus even dangerous? In Korea and Japan, they, they, they eat live octopus. It's a strange thing to eat. And occasionally people get choked to death because the octopus suffers you. Grab them off and choke them. <coughs> Okay. We're, we're much more advanced than the octopus. We, we, we catching them for food, using them for bait, habitat, degradation, all kinds of things. We're much more advanced than the octopus.